Sit down. Yes. How are you all? Fine. Good, sir. Fine. Good. So, are you excited to go to the next topic? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. I will not reveal the topic right away. Before that, I would like to interact with you people. A uh, few questions. You just answer if you know the answer. Right. Do you know the meaning of correspondence? No? Communication? Yes. There are so many ways of communication, right? Yes. What sort of communications do we use these days? For example, if you would like to communicate something to someone, what communicative uh, devices do you use these days? Mobile phones, emails, yes. Any other? Messages. Messages, very good. Photos. Video calling, right? Okay, very good. But what about the people who had not used all these things some years ago? Letters. Letters. Yes. letters, very good. So you got the point. Letters. Letters were the best. Even today, people write letters, right? Personal letters, okay? Uh, official letters. But the thing is, we actually communicate something to someone through this letter part okay so that is what we call correspondence <clears throat> have you ever imagined writing a letter to someone who had no address so can you tell me who had actually no address god, god obviously uh, do you believe in god no sir. no, sir. No, sir. Raise your hands. How many of you believe in God? Right? Okay. But in this particular chapter, it is completely based on a faith of a man. Faith. He completely believes God, existence of God, and he takes uh, a kind of decision like no other no other person except god could help him in his situation so what makes him to think about like that and what is that devastating situation that prompted him to write a letter to god because we already discussed the uh, way of communication right he cannot make a phone call he cannot make a video call or something else only correspondence through letter. a letter. And that too, it's a correspondence between a human and God. God. Does really God reply to his letter? Does he really uh, help him? Or what are the consequences of this letter's love? Ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And the title of this chapter is A Letter to God. To God. To God. Author name is G. L. Curtis. So let me narrate the story. Right. There was a valley. In the entire valley, there was only a one alone, I mean lonely house. On a crest of a low hill, I mean a small mountain. One could see the entire uh, area, surrounding area, from his house. Okay, there was a farmer named Lencho. So, who is the hero of this particular story? Lencho. And he was a farmer. farmer. <coughs> he was a farmer. And uh, naturally, farmers raise their own crops based on the seasons. This man raised the uh, uh, corn field. It's a crop, actually corn. He had a huge amount of uh, land over there, and uh, the corn field was growing really well as per the season. Okay, for the entire season, for the entire year, he was doing the same thing for the survival of himself and his family members because he was the only breadwinner of the family. Can you tell me what is the meaning of only breadwinner of the family? Only one. Yes. Yeah. He is the only one who earns 
money. money. Right. And based on the crop, they live for the entire year. Yeah. So education, okay, any other economic purposes, all the family needs are only covered because of this seed. Oh. Because of this particular agricultural operation, they have no other job. And he is the only man who actually takes care of his family. family. Right? As he expected, everything was going on well. Right? The cornfield dotted with number of flowers. And it was actually the uh, ripe season. Everything was going well, fantastic. And he was expecting a little bit rain also before harvesting. Do you know what is harvesting? Cutting yeah. stage. That is the final stage of agriculture. So that uh, crop should be cut and then it is uh, sent to uh, the nearest town. That means selling purpose. Then they could earn some money and finally with that money he could survive himself as well as the entire family. That is the thing. So far, so good. Okay. As he was expecting some rain, right? He prayed to God and as he expected, rain approached. There were some black clouds because before harvesting, that's actually the phase. That is actually the phase. Before harvesting, there should be a, a shower of rain. That's all. As he expected, rain came. He felt really happy. He went to the field. And he actually experienced the whole uh, rain and he called those raindrops as silver coins. Why? Can you tell me why he compared raindrops with silver coins? Because that rain actually brings him a very good harvest. That gives him very good money. Right? So he compared raindrops with silver, silver coins. Everything was good. But Suddenly, the rain turned out to be a hailstorm. Suddenly, the, rain the normal rain, what he was expecting, turned to be a hailstorm. You know what is hailstorm? A strong wind along with hailstones. You know hailstones? Yes. So they are very big hailstones. About an hour it rained and his complete field got destroyed. Entire field got destroyed. destroyed. Not even a single leaf remained on the corn field. Everything was white. The entire field was covered with this hailstones and it was just like a snow covering entire world. Can you imagine the situation of Lencho? He was very, very sad. He went to the field. Not even a single thing remained. And there a question arose in his mind. How could he survive till the next season? All of a sudden the wind actually created that impact and it had devastated the total field. Right? So he was in such a dreadful situation. That night he did not sleep. He was continuously crying. He was continuously worried about his future and his family too. Then he got the one and only hope that is help from God. What is that? Help from God. So he decided to write a letter to God, addressing God directly to God. Generally we write receiver's address, sender's address by writing a letter, right? So he completely wrote to God and he just narrated the whole incident, what had actually happened. And he wrote, you were the only hope. Okay? Till the next season, harvest to survive. I need 100 pesos. So in his uh, native uh, place, pesos are something like rupees. 100 pesos for the 
survival till the next crop is actually grown. Clear? Right? So he went to the nearest post office and posted this letter. Just like a normal thing. Right? So what would you understand the, uh, uh, the, mean, uh, the attitude of this particular man? The one and only thing that is faith. It's a very firm faith. He strongly believes God's existence. And he also believes that only God could help him. him. That's all. So casually he wrote a letter. Okay. And dropped in the mailbox. Who collects generally the letters from mailbox? Postman. postman. So usually a postman collected and uh, he actually observed every letter and finally when he sees this thing, he laughed at it because the receiver of that letter is God. He laughed at it and he gave it to the postmaster. Postmaster also laughed at it because it's a kind of joke writing a letter to God. They don't know what is actually written and what is actually placed inside. Okay? Right? And then, uh, even postmaster, yes, he would like to see it. So he opened the letter and read the whole thing. After reading the whole thing, he was actually stunned by the faith of this man. Okay? He was actually very impressed. What faith this man could maintain? Correspondence to God, he exclaimed, and then he thought to answer the letter. Postmaster wanted to answer the letter. To answer the letter, do we need only letters there? I am God, I am good, I received your letter. No. What do they need? 100 pixels. So the postmaster didn't want to. He didn't want to spoil the dream of this man and he didn't want to spoil the faith of that man in God. He would like to help Lencho with this 100 pesos. So he actually collected money from his employees, his friends and he also gave some part of his salary and he could gather 70 pesos. Only 70 pesos he could gather. Okay? And that money was carefully put in an envelope and that is ready for the uh, man who is actually in great need. So the very next Sunday, just so casually Lencho, as he was expecting money, see the faith. He, he was sure that he could get the help. So he went there and received this packet, immediately went to the uh, bench, there he opened it and counted money. What is the amount? Seven. 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 After collecting money and counting it, okay, as he received only 70 pesos, Lincho got really angry because he expected 100 pesos, but there was only 70 pesos. He really got angry on God or somebody else. Let us see. So he took one more letter and he started writing. After finishing, after finishing it up, he folded it and then put in the mailbox. The postmaster actually ran to collect that particular thing and as he opened it, and he read actually, Dear God, I received only 70 pesos. As I expected 100 pesos for the survival of my entire family till the next crop is grown. Okay? Send the remaining 30 pesos immediately. But don't send the money through the post office. Don't send the money through the post office, you please send through some other means as the post office employees have stolen my 30 pesos. 
as they are the bunch of crooks, you know, they have stolen my 30 pesos. So the postmaster's situation you can understand now, right? So that is how the lesson ends. What do you understand by the end of this lesson? The one and only thing, the faith of this man. A firm faith, a strong belief that God could help him. But who actually helped him? The postmaster. The postmaster and the post office employees. But what did he call them? Crooks. Bunch of crooks. Why? He imagined that he had, uh, sorry, they he had, had stolen actually stolen 30 pesos. But who collected all the 70 pesos? The post office. Okay? So this is a question left in the end of this particular lesson. Existence of God, humanity, the post office employees, they are actually, uh, they actually showed humanity and helped this man. But this man could not see that kind of humanity in other humans. So the moral of this particular story is we must see a human or humanity among other people. Even though you receive certain help from other people, you should believe in that help. It's human help. Of course, there are so many theories. When someone is you know, in great need, if you help automatically, the person is a real God to you, right? Right? Yes, yes, sir. So you need not expect God from somewhere to help you. And you need not uh, get that kind of indication that you are actually God. If you help others who are in great need, you are automatically a God material. That's all. Okay? So there are several questions at the end of this lesson. Who is right? Who is wrong? Okay? Whom do you support? The postmaster or? Lane Chow. Okay? Right? So whom do you support? The postmaster or Lane Chow? The postmaster. In two ways you can support him. One way, postmaster helped him. He showed humanity. But Lane Chow, he believed only in God. Because of his firm faith, he had actually moved the postmaster and the postmaster collected the money and gave it to him. Right? So that is actually a letter to God by G.L. Fuentes. Now, we will get an extra information from this. Gregorio Lopez Fuentes, a writer, poet, and journalist, was known for his writings on the Mexican Revolution. His notable 
works include The Encampment, Earth, My General, and The Indian. His writings realistically portray everyday life in Mexico. He was conferred the National Prize of Arts and Science in 1935. The short story titled A Letter to God was published in 1940. A farmer, Lan when was this published? 1948. Okay, and he also wrote another sort of stories in his own uh, way of writing. Ancho writes a letter to God to ask for help after his crop is ruined. The story depicts Lancho's immense faith in God. It also depicts the simple kindness of human beings. So it depicts simple kindness of human beings plus faith in God two, two different ways now let's let's see what happens in a letter to God by Gregorio Lopez Fuentes the only house in the entire valley overlooked a field of ripe corn Lancho, the owner of the house and field had been looking at the sky all morning he told his wife that it was going to rain. So he was actually waiting. As I told you already, he was waiting for the uh, wonderful rain because a good a rain good gives a good harvest. harvest. Repeat it. A, a good, good rain, rain gives a good harvest. Soon, true to Lancho's prediction, big drops of rain began to fall. Lancho went outside to enjoy the rain. He felt that it wasn't rain, but ten and five cent pieces. With satisfaction, he watched the rain shower his ripe corn fields. Suddenly, a strong wind began to blow. Then large hailstones began to fall. Lancho's happiness now turned to worry. He hoped the rain would stop soon, otherwise his crops would be destroyed. So everything was perfect as he expected. There was rain, but all of a sudden what happened? The rain turned out to be hailstorm. But the rain did not stop. It covered the house, the field and the valley with a layer of hailstones. The harvest was completely destroyed. Lancho stood in the middle of his ruined field and thought that a plague of locusts would have been better than this. It was a sad night for the Lancho family. However, they had one hope, God. That night, Lancho thought about God and his all-seeing eyes. So, he decided to write a letter to God, asking for a hundred pesos to sow his field as well as survive until next year. You. Do you understand? Yes. yes. So the story I narrated is actually picturized here and the same events are given here. Okay? So this is a better way of understanding the story. Right? Went to the post office the next day to stand and read the letter. The postman on seeing the letter laughed and took it to show it to his boss. The postmaster a fat, cheerful man laughed as well, but he admired Lancho's faith in God. Not wanting to disappoint Lancho, he decided to write an answer. He also realized that he would have to send some money along with the letter. So he collected contributions from his employees and friends. He also donated a part of his salary. However, he could only collect a little more than half the amount Lancho had asked for. He put the money in an envelope along with a letter marked God. On Sunday, Lancho returned to the post office. The postman handed him the letter. The postmaster, happy with his deed, watched from the office. So they were eagerly waiting for the response of the man who is going to receive money. Okay? So what is the unusual response 
was there, he got really angry. Lancho was a man of faith, so he wasn't surprised to see the money. However, he was angry when he counted the money. Immediately, he asked for ink and paper. He sat at the writing table and slowly wrote a letter. He looked like he was having trouble expressing his thoughts on paper. Finally, he finished the letter and dropped it in the mailbox. The postmaster immediately collected the letter and opened it. In the letter, Lancho had written that of the hundred pesos, only seventy pesos reached him. He needed thirty pesos more. But he asked God not to send it through the post office. He believed people at the post office were thieves who stole his thirty pesos. Understood now the whole story. Right? So, what happened initially? He expected a very good harvest. Of course, rain. Rain came, but it destroyed his overall field. Then he wrote a letter to God, right? In order to get some help from him. And he wrote that letter and posted. Then post office employees collected it. They helped, but they couldn't help. What the actual amount was required, based on that, Lincho predicted, strongly believed that this employee is actually stolen. So stolen this money, and he asked the remaining 30 pesos through some other means, not through the post office. So there are two aspects in this. One is a sense of kindness, another one is faith. So you cannot uh, uh, blame uh, the post office employees as they help such a sort of man and you cannot blame this uh, particular man Lincho also because his belief was that God cannot make mistakes. If you ask 100 pesos, God sends 100 pesos. So he believed that God had already sent 100 pesos. But post office employees had stolen 30 pesos and he gave only 70 pesos. Right? That's all. Now, this is the worksheet. What does the author compare hailstones to? Silver coins. Silver coins. How did the postmaster react to the letter? Postmaster, not the postman. He was correspondent. He was surprised and he was impressed and then he wanted to answer the letter. The following Sunday, the postman handed the letter to Lencho and the postmaster observed him from his office. There are two instances of irony in this situation. What are they? One man is waiting for his reply because he believed he was not surprised actually after receiving money because he did not write a letter casually to God. He was sure that he would receive help. So he received. That is one thing. The other thing, they just wanted to observe this man's happiness while receiving the money. Okay. They expected that uh, Lencho would get a uh, grand surprise but he was not surprised. Next. We have long answer type questions. We will discuss with this later. Uh, now, let us answer this. What did Lencho say would have been better than the rain? The plague of the plague of Why did Lencho need the rain? Uh, so that he crossed the What good deed had the postmaster done? He has collected. Why 
Why did Linzo say that the rain was like coins? He was how would you characterize Lencho's relationship with God? Faithful. Faithful. The other options, superstitious, cynical, and disappointed. Why did Lencho ask God? What? Sorry, what did Lencho ask God in the letter? To send him <laughs> How did Lencho react? He was, he was, angry. He was angry. But what was the natural reaction? He should be surprised actually, but he got angry because of receiving less number of messages. Right then, this is how we completed our chapter. Okay, I hope you understood this very well and you answered those questions also in the end. And uh, now, <coughs> your homework is if you would like to write a letter to God, what incidents would you like to narrate in your letter? For example, based on your problems, what sort of things? Would you like to narrate to God to solve? And do you expect him to solve all those things? I write a letter to God and bring it to me tomorrow. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this session. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.